Uh, hello, my name is Magda Olczak. I am founder of Female Founders Poland. Uh, and uh, I will ask questions today to our, uh, our guests. Uh, so my first question is, uh, could you please tell us a few words about you, about your startups? And uh, at that same time, please tell us, do you see or do you believe that there is something like glass ceilings in startup world? All right, so hello everyone. My name is Karolina Demianczuk and I'm a founder of Spontime, a social networking mobile application for spontaneous meetups with friends. I don't know if you've heard about it. I will be happy to tell you more after the panel. Uh, so answering your question, Magda, I think that, well, from my perspective, I didn't see any glass ceiling. Um, I actually think that the fact that I'm a woman helped me um, achieve what I did right now because everyone is much more, uh, I guess, it's different that I'm a woman and everyone is ki more kind for me and has different attitude. Uh, but of course, I think that um, even if there's no glass ceiling, I think there's still not enough women who, uh, who enter the startup industry. And I think it's more because women are scared to, to do it. They are afraid because they assume that they won't make it because they're, they're women. So that's my answer. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Olga Jakubowska. I'm a co-founder of Gripit, a web and mobile platforms for climbing, gyms, and climbers, which is a pretty uh, small niche uh, industry. And about glass ceiling, well, um, I think that we can speak of something such as a glass ceiling, but you know, the point is how to define it, actually. So we can agree that there is less women in tech and in startups, but I would, look for reasons in our society and the educational paths that are um, like let's say a little bit destined for women and for men they are just different and um, I think that um, you know every, everything is about motivation and inspiration Hi, my name is Marta. I'm the co-founder and GM of Asomo. We are an online, low-cost online money transfer. We operate in 22 countries in Europe and we send money anywhere around the world in six different ways. We can reach five billion people with our network. And in, in sort of in short, what we do is Western Union, but five times cheaper and on your phone catering for the economic migrants. Um, do I think that there is a glass ceiling? Well, I think Broadly, if we look at the sort of the business world as a whole, we look at, you know, there are more men called John who are, uh, who are CEOs of uh, FTSE 500 companies than, than women. Um, in startups, I'd look at two things. One is there are not enough women investors. And if there aren't enough women investors, then there won't be enough funding for women entrepreneurs. Um, it isn't as clear a sort of link. Um, as, as I just said it, but there is definitely a correlation. So I think that we should be pushing for more women in business as well as more women in the VC world to be able to provide funding for those women who have the balls to come up with an idea and pursue it. The second point I'd make, um, there's a very powerful TED talk that talks about how we raise our children and it says that we raise our boys to be brave and we raise our girls to be perfect and I think that we're still somewhat suffering from that. I think that we still have to um, push for more bravery amongst women who then say okay I'm going to go and I'm going to do a startup or I'm going to pursue a career in a startup. Last point, I'm hiring. I, I, we have an office in Krakow and especially if you're a woman, if you're interested in technology, please let me know. Uh, Marta at Asimo.com and I'd love to speak to you. Um, this is my way of making sure that more women work at startups. So please let me know. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Lucina Varda. I'm co-founder of uh, GetFunded.pl. It's an uh, equity crowd crowdfunding platform. And on my career, I Mm. I saw that there is no uh, glass ceiling, but in the graded meaning, it's more like a problem with um, treating me as a business, business partner by male environment. Uh, but I'm still fighting with this, and I think that uh, I make a big progress, so it's, it's better now. <laughs> Thanks. Mm. Uh, hello everyone, I'm uh, Agata Kurek. I'm uh, the founder of uh, Coco World clothing brand. Uh, my, my 
journey started uh, actually in Africa when I w went five years ago and I decided to open my own company and to support exactly women and uh, craftsmen from around the world. So if we are talking about glass ceiling, I can, what I'm really into is supporting women from around the world because I just feel that uh, uh, we need much more support and uh, we are growing kids and we have much more uh, obligations at home. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do. And um, that's, that's how I develop my brand, and this is kind of fair trade also um, movement. And I'm also hiring. <laughs> we are searching right now for a product manager for our online uh, shop. So if anyone just want to know more details, yeah. Okay, so in Female Founders Group, we discuss a lot about uh, what actions can we do for women to promote them? Because based on my experience, uh, we need um, in some way special support because we don't believe in our competence, we don't believe in our success, with, uh, in our achievements. But it's one thing. But second thing are some very, very uh, precise actions. And I would like to ask you, do you think that we should do something, it's my first question, to support women in, in the startups. And my second question is, if yes, what, 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 should, what should we do? All right, so from my perspective in Poland, there's no support for women entrepreneurs. Uh, I founded my company in USA, in Silicon Valley, where, uh, where you Google uh, support women entrepreneurs, you have like hundreds of pages of, uh, of different searches. Uh, so for example, there are uh, female entrepreneurs associations uh, where women meet, meet with mentors or uh, people just come and support them, different CEOs. Or there's uh, investment funds who just support in female, uh, in female founded startups. So there's, in USA, there's many uh, programs only for women entrepreneurs. And I don't think I've seen anything like this in Poland. Uh, there are, but there I have, are. I have um, additional question. Do you think that uh, some special treatment, because we also discuss among Polish, Polish female founders, if special competitions or special treatment, special criteria for women are good or no? Because it means that we are in some way weaker, so we need some special points uh, for, for being women. No, I don't, I don't think so. Well, <laughs> it's like in the US when you have contests for Asian people or contests for Mexican, you know? It just, um, it's, it's, we're not saying that they are worse than us, but it's just a um, different niche, let's say. And in Poland, women, are, women f entrepreneurs are still a niche, I guess. So I think we should have uh, like programs for women entrepreneurs, just, just for women. If you don't agree with each other, please express yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, so I disagree here. So I believe that we should totally encourage female entrepreneurs like we should enc encourage all entrepreneurs. And this is the point that um, we need a lot of successful stories, a lot of inspiration, because inspiration is, the, like I say, it, a fuel of startup machine. So. Um, Basically, networking in startups is what makes this industry going, really, and we need the same for, uh, for women. But we cannot say, well, I don't agree that um, there's a point of dividing m men and women, because we have to com complement our competencies. And I think the best teams are diverse teams where we can cooperate, and if we want to show that women and women startups and women entrepreneurs are equal, then we should be equally working together. But the point is that our problem probably starts with, I totally agree with Marta, about uh, saying that we uh, raise our children, our, our daughters to be perfect, and our uh, sons to be brave. And this is the point. Men are risk takers, and startup is a risk. So that's, uh, the other thing is that, uh, among um, computer science uh, majors, there's only 20% women. So how do we want to have you know, equal um, distribution of men and uh, women in uh, tech startups if there's just less women doing IT jobs and IT stuff? So the point is probably it's a question of raising generations of people who just are brave enough, and of women basically, who are just brave enough um, to take other career paths for themselves. Definitely agree with the last point. Um, 
I think it's interesting. I'd like somebody maybe from the audience as well to verify that I heard when I last came to a sort of women in tech panel in, in Warsaw last year, that actually when you compare the global data of how many women entrepreneurs there are and when you compare the Polish data, actually there is a higher percentage of female entrepreneurs in Poland. And apparently some of that is stemming from the fact that broadly in the communist era, everybody had to work. It wasn't like, oh, you're a, you're a woman, you stay at home and I'm going to be the breadwinner, I'm going to go to work. So I think that in terms of mentality, there is definitely, I mean, hey, Polish girls have balls. I don't think anybody doubts that. And I think that we have this courage ultimately to go out. Um, but what probably we need is a little bit more encouragement and a little bit more education. And I think that it's the education to the wider public is the education to men and women alike um, in terms of opportunities, in terms of how we have to be more supportive of everyone, to your point, um, in, in broadly in the startup scene, and also education on masculine and feminine traits rather than the differences between men and women. I think a challenge, it was already an interesting conversation right before this panel. The challenge is quite often that it's the masculine traits that are being promoted in businesses. You have to be tough. You need to push for your five, you know, push for your business. You need to be very salesy. You need to, you know, you don't, you don't want to be too collegial for as long as this is the standard. First of all, there is a bias. If a guy is like that, great, he's entrepreneurial. If a girl is like that, she's a bitch. Nobody wants to work with her. So how do we go about promoting amongst men and women alike that feminine traits that they can bring to the table, the fact that they're collegial, the fact that we are good listeners, the fact that we can multitask much better than men from what I hear. I think this is the bit that we should really focus on. And this is also going to be an encouragement that's going to create these positive stories, these good examples that you mentioned that are going to push women to go forward. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I agree definitely with uh, with my colleagues. I think that we should motivate and support uh, each other as a woman, and uh, we should fight <laughs> to make business because I think we are definitely better uh, better than men. And I I think that um, we should teach, learn girls from an early age to. Uh, to show them that they are, they, they can be, uh, they, they can work well also in a working life, not only at home, uh, and they can be succeed too in this field. Uh, yeah, what, what can I, what can I add? I'm, I totally agree with my predecessors. I really like the part uh, about the education that this kind of um, courage that we have starts very early, exactly when we start to um, yeah, teach and, and educate our our kids. And this is really like important point: how to how to how to uh, educate our daughters not only to be very uh, elegant and beautiful, but also to take risks, to be kind of, to have this inside power and intuition, and to be able to, um, uh, yeah, to, to learn from this intuition. I really believe that. The education, I, um, well, I don't know if you agree with me, but when, when I was a kid, I was very encouraged to, you know, follow my educational path, whatever I choose. So I was told, you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, you can be, you can, I don't know, build bridges, but nobody ever told me you can be a programmer. As a girl, I've never, ever heard it. And maybe that's the point. Okay, so uh, my last question will be about your motivation. What happened that you, um, I, I also was, uh, I was, my, my mother told me to be perfect and to be silent, which is people, yeah, people who, people who know me that they, they, they know that it's difficult to be silent for me. Uh, what, you, what was your motivation and inspiration to be a risk taker and to start your, your business? So I think I've always observed my parents who they never worked um, like nine hour job. They always had different businesses. They always uh, took risk. And I think I just observed them and I always knew that I don't want to work in, uh, in a full time job. And I always wanted to have something um, like something that I create. And also like I started doing stuff from the first year of college. So that was I think that's all. Um, that's a hard question, actually. Well, I think that um, 
the, the way I was raised and um, my kind of in individual approach to many subjects made me always want to create something on my own. But um, we're talking a lot about encouraging women, um, and not only women, to be entrepreneurs. And I think that equally we also should think about Maybe it's not for everyone. I know that maybe it's, uh, it's not a good point here right now because we are all entrepreneurs and uh, startup founders. But um, I was, for example, I wasn't aware that it's such a hard work. So before I founded, I co-founded my startup, I was you know, getting my salary, I was working a lot, but it's, it was fine. And right now it's, you know, it's just, you don't have a control over your life anymore because it's just your work, basically. So we also need to talk about that, that it's, you know, you have to have certain personal um, approach to, towards that and really agree with that. Agree with that. And, um, you know, I think that some people are just born to do that or they learn to do that. And the point is to accept it, that it, this is basically hard work and it's not all, you know, flowers, roses. Very interesting. Um, I think, actually, my, so, so somewhat to your point, I think it sort of stems from this inner curiosity. Um, you don't really know what your life is going to be like, but you want to give it a go. My experience was a little bit different to Carolina's. It was actually the reverse. Um, I was born in the 80s in Poland. My parents had never had an opportunity to travel, learn languages other than Russian. They've only been to former Yugoslavia and Eastern Germany. Um, they work in jobs where, you know, this was what was available. And, and, and I sort of grew up looking at them who sort of, you know, lived their whole lives. And these were very full lives and very happy lives. But then I found myself in the early 2000s speaking four languages, having a passport. Poland entered the European Union. And, and there were all these opportunities out there. And it almost felt like it would be a missed opportunity given that my, my parents didn't have any of that. And, and everything was open for me. I, I felt that it, there was almost a calling that I might as well give it a go. And ultimately, I think the point is, these jobs that pay you salaries, you know, if you're smart, if you're, if you're hardworking, you're always gonna get one. You're always going to get that job. This next corporate job is always there waiting for you. But there is a specific moment in life, and I guess also we're all young here. Being young can also be an, an amazing moment in life when maybe you don't have a mortgage yet, maybe you don't have two kids, maybe your parents aren't aging yet and you don't have to take care of them. And, and why is it a normal thing that people would want to take a gap year and go traveling, but why isn't it a normal thing that you sit down with a couple of your best friends and try and figure out how you might change the world? And it might be that you won't. It might be that you'll never do anything about that. But the beauty of building businesses today versus building businesses 30 years ago is that you don't have to have a load of capital up front. You don't need to build a factory. You don't need to hire 100 people. You can literally set up a platform, send it to a bunch of your friends and ask them if they like it. And if they do, chances are that you have something there and you might as well pursue it. So I think it's never been easier and it's almost, it's, it's a right, it's a privilege, but it's almost an obligation that we should have the balls to go and, and try and start things that we think could have a good shot. Wow. <laughs> uh, what motivates me? I like to take risk. And most of all, I'm, I like to be the lord of my time and work to, on my terms, <laughs> not, different, not on the terms of uh, employer. Um, my story is a little different because I was, I was traveling a lot before I founded my own company. So I was a volunteer in Peru, I was somewhere in Colombia, somewhere in Africa, and I was bringing all the handicrafts from around the world. And in just one moment in my life, I decided, okay, and now I can build a way to sell all this beautiful stuff for these people around the world and just be able to help them somehow. And that moment also my daughter really helped me because it was the moment that I thought, okay, or I can do something meaningful uh, or I can just continue the, the, the job I had. So in just one week I took the decision that I quit the previous job and I opened my own company. So it was like kind of, I think, the, the frustration that came from, uh, from, from the corporation when I was working before. Uh, many things that just uh, pushed me to, to, to change something. Um, yeah, but I think, I think just I follow intuition somehow that was inside, yeah. Okay. Can I, can I ask you? Oh. 
<laughs> okay, so yeah, so also what I wanted to add is that the satisfaction is unmatched because when you work for someone, like you said, you're never as satisfied doing the work. And here, when you get messages of people who, who love your product and who say that uh, like they love it, and it just, it makes me so happy doing what I do. So I sleep basically five or five maximum hours a day but I love it, you know? And when I was working in corporations before, I couldn't wait to go back home. So it's, I think it's, if I have one life to choose, so, I mean, if I have one life, I want to choose the life that I want. So, I guess, yeah. Uh, because we have last five minutes, and I thought that maybe we have some questions from the audience. Okay. Anybody? Okay, so uh, my last question for last of your sentence will be um, how, you, how you convince um, these, uh, these people here or these ladies here who have doubts maybe now if they should run their startup or no? What would be sentence for them? Uh, many, many of my friends and of my best friends exactly ask me, Agata, okay, I'm, I'm 30 some, something, what should I do in my life? I really don't know what to do. And the only question that I ask them and that I ask also myself, what was the thing that you always were doing? Like, doesn't matter if you were 15, 20, 35, doesn't matter. Just choose one thing that wherever you were in Poland or you lived in other countries, you always loved to do and just follow it. And I think that's, that's the point, exactly, because when you just start doing something you love, you will never feel you're at work, you will just develop your, your passion, and that's what Startup is about. Exactly, I think that uh, if, you, if you decide to be uh, an entrepreneur, you can do what you, what you love, what is your hobby, and realize that. Agreed. <laughs> It's a famous cliche, do what you love and you never work a day in your life. Basically, I think we all agree. So I can advise you that the worst thing you can do is do nothing uh, because like many people are just scared to found their startups. But if you're scared of, like, of course, there are always haters. There are always people who don't like what you do. There are always people who criticize you. But if you think about it and just don't care, you know, just do, do what you love and do because like you always regret stuff you didn't do. So I can give a nice quote. Uh, I learned it in the US in my high school. Uh, so I can finish the panel with like nice inspirational quote. Uh, shoot for the moon, shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you land among the stars. <laughs> and that was good. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for being with us and thank you for being with us and speak to us and thank you. Thank you. Thank you.